you watching Night TV International live from Cairo, uh, still with the breakfast show and our second topic uh, today on the breakfast show. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli hailed on Monday efforts uh, exerted to revamp archaeological buildings and make optimal use of them, stressing the state's keenness to revive historical Cairo. Uh, Madbouli's remarks came during his uh, inspection tour of Sultan Hussein Kamel Palace, which is being uh, rehabilitated to be a complex for digital creativity uh, and uh, entrepreneurship. The palace is located in Heliopolis, a uh, district in Cairo, and Madbouli was accompanied by the Minister of Tourism and Antiquities, Mr. Khalid Al Anani, Education Minister Tar uh, Shawqi, and the Local Development Minister Mohammed Mahmoud Sharawi, Telecommunications uh, Minister Amr Talat and Public Business Sector Minister Hisham Tawfiq as well as Cairo Governor uh, Khalid Abdel Ail. Uh, Talat said that the technological construction works are underway to turn the palace into a digital creativity uh, center along with maintaining its architectural style and the heritage value of the building. The center will include technological labs, labs for global companies, technological incubators for startups, meeting hall and co-working spaces and uh, the minister also pointed to the signing of cooperation protocol among the ministries of ICT education and public business sectors to carry out the palace's refurbishment, adding that 85% of the construction work uh, at the historical building have been finalized and completed. And it's our pleasure to have with us over the phone uh, today, uh, Mr. Walid al Battuti, international tourism consultant and expert. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, uh, you have uh, probably have listened to the introduction to our topic today, uh, the uh, renovation of uh, the palace in Heliopolis. And my first question would be, uh, what is the value behind such uh, a, a renovation as a historical building and as, the plans, uh, as for the plans for the building to be a center for technology and business? Well, the idea is a brilliant idea, and reviving uh, these spaces one more time and bringing them back to life and putting them uh, back on the map to be used, it is very interesting. Nevertheless, that I would like to uh, say something here. This is not just a brilliant idea. Uh, this, these places have very uh, positive energy. So for those who would work there, will have uh, a great atmosphere, as you know, the old, all the old buildings of Egypt, uh, they are five, uh, five and a half meters uh, uh, high ceiling. The rooms are quite big and not completely, they're completely different than the modern construction that we have today. So uh, reviving these things and putting them back again to work is such a great idea. And it will also inspire those who would work in, in these places. Mm -hmm. um, from the historical uh, background, um, how valuable is this palace? What is so remarkable about this palace uh, in order to be chosen to be uh, renovated and used for, as you said, a brilliant idea, mixing history and future together? So what's remarkable about this palace in specific? Well, not, not just this one. In general, all Egyptian palaces mm -hmm. uh, have, have historical meaning. And uh, it would also uh, uh, enrich the, uh, the taste of, um, of, of, the, of the Egyptians, the people who would visit these places or the people who would work in these places and go back, back and forth every day. Uh, it would definitely uh, have a change and impact on their life, uh, of course, in a positive way. So all Egyptian palaces, any, anything in Egypt, by the way, uh, over 100 years uh, is... is part of the Egyptian history and is considered to be an antique. You know, this is by law, anything over 100 years has this. So imagine that the, the Palace of Hussein Kamen and the history that it has. And of course, with the opening, uh, definitely it will bring uh, some information to the public about Hussein Kamen at that period of time. Mm -hmm. And um, as I mentioned in uh, the news, uh, that this will be this place, the palace, Hussein Kamil's palace, will be a center for entrepreneurship and creativity. How is this going to work? I mean, 
people hear this, but we need some clarification on the, the real thing that will be going there. The, the Egyptian government right now is paying so much attention to this idea of entrepreneurship. So they go to the youngsters, to the young, to the youth, and see what kind of projects that they have, and they give them the space, the fund, the uh, the chance, because sometimes they all want to uh, work and do a good job, but that they don't have the option of facilities such as money or place to work or a platform even to put their stuff. So the Egyptian government is benefiting from them right now by doing all these uh, places. By the way, this is not going to be the only one I've heard that it's going to be one of 13 places throughout the, uh, throughout the country. Uh -huh. So it's, it's a, a real ambitious uh, plan and a real brilliant one, as you said. I have another question. Uh, do you think that there was a message picking uh, such um, a, an optimistic, brilliant project, a future uh, notion for helping startup uh, companies and uh, making it a technological center, but yet uh, choosing a historical place, what would that give, what message would it give to the outer world, to, the, to Western uh, modern countries and to our young, uh, young uh, businessmen in Egypt? Do you okay. think there was a message behind that? Yeah, in my opinion, this is I'm saying my personal opinion, mm -hmm. instead, of the, instead of the young, young uh, uh, youth of Egypt uh, uh, to be uh, their efforts as waste or they trying to look for a chance to go abroad uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to the Middle East, to the Arab country or to Europe or even to the United States to find their way there. The Egyptian government is trying to provide it for them here. And mm -hmm. there is already, I don't know if you know this, there is already a very smart man, uh, I've already thought of this uh, a little bit uh, a time ago, mm -hmm. which he bought the, uh, the Greek campus of the American University in Cairo, yes. in downtown in, in Babadu, and he did it for the startup. Mm -hmm. And it, it's working like crazy. I mean, there is, over there, it's like a, a, a net, you know, there's like youngsters. I've been there a few times, and you can see, a very young, energetic Egyptian uh, young men and girls, uh, boys and girls, uh, they're over there working very hard. And some projects already uh, uh, started to hit, and this, of course, spreads out, and everybody finds out about it, and then encourage everyone and give them uh, a closer look to their dream that it could be uh, achieved on, in their motherland in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't need to travel abroad. And that's the message I think that the Egyptian government is saying. If you have something come forth at the, at the, in the old days, sometimes I would have an idea, but I can't reach the government. There is no uh, thing. Today, it's the easiest thing you can do is to communicate uh, uh, with the whole government, with the, uh, His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Egypt, or even the President of Egypt. You can send them a message, and within a very short time, you get a response. Uh, and the technology, uh, you know, I don't know if this is related to what we're saying, but let me just tell you, I was sitting at my home with my phone, in my phone, mm -hmm. I registered for the uh, vaccination of COVID-19, mm -hmm. and the following day, I got a message. Mm -hmm. Who would ever believe that this would happen in Egypt? You know, this was, in, in, in you know, 10 years ago, I would say this is a dream. Yeah, and I yeah. sent a message, the next day, next day, I got a message that says, come, and they gave me the timing with the number, and when I went, I found the number, I found my name, everything. So this is where Egypt is hitting technology, uh, uh, digitizing everything, and mm -hmm. everything is going to be under one number. Uh, once you have your ID, it's registered on everything. They would know your bank account, your driving license, your medical history, everything. So we're hitting there and hitting fast, and we're doing a great job, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen, actually, as you said, uh, Mr. Walid, that uh, we've seen the uh, digital Egypt everywhere in most of the services, like the health ministry, as you said. We've seen progress even on the level of universities and 
uh, schools and actually it's an amazing job uh, the government is um, actually doing right now and with the renovations in specific um, because that's the topic we're actually uh, discussing now with the renovations how would you evaluate the, the, the pace of renovations and the number of places renovated uh, throughout um, uh, old Cairo or the historical Cairo as they call it if you walk down downtown in, 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 in Cairo, in, in the downtown streets of Cairo, you will see the beauty and the richness of Cairo, and you will understand how come Egypt in 1933 uh, was chosen one of the uh, most beautiful cities in the world, one of the top five uh, 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 beautiful cities in the world. And today, the people started to have hope when they see things are being done, the uh, level of the, the seeding, uh, of their dreams started to get higher and higher and they want to get things uh, uh, done faster and faster. And as I said, if you walk and see the beauty of the old buildings of Egypt, these things are very rich. And when you walk and live in it and work in it, it inspires you mm -hmm. to do better. So in my opinion, uh, that was a brilliant idea to uh, make use of these uh, places uh, or useful uh, use, and especially the people who start to go and, and visit it and see it. And, and there is a great job that's been done, to be honest, on the restoring uh, all our uh, uh, very rich culture and heritage. Yeah, I think if, we'd, if we have a plan to restore every single building, we'll have like years to do that, don't you think so? Because we have really uh, marvelous and masterpieces everywhere. Well, the, 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 distance, the, the distance that we need to uh, do for, uh, you know, one million uh, uh, miles is thought with one. So we're, we're no, I think we're on the right track. We're doing good. Mm -hmm. And uh, even our speed is, you know, is very good. Uh, you know, the amount of things that you see is being done and delivered. Uh, it's very good. And uh, that shows that uh, the current government is uh, really uh, um, uh, under-promising, over-delivering. Um, I, I see them this yeah. way. Uh, uh, I, I know, do agree with morning, you. I'm, yeah, I'm I do agree. Way. Right now I'm talking to you and I'm on a highway and I, I saw a couple of bridges that I was, I was driving on this highway uh, like two weeks ago and they were not there. And I asked myself just now, uh, sorry, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah. When was this done? You know, things... The, the movement of construction in Egypt, and in my field in tourism, I always been saying to tourists, the Egyptians since they built the pyramids never stopped building uh, at all. So I do agree with you, Mr. Walid. Thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast show. Uh, it was a pleasure, and of course, I agree with uh, Mr. Walid Al Batuti, international uh, tourism and uh, consultant and expert. Um, the government is doing a great job when it comes to renovations, digitizing, and uh, we're hoping for more. We become so uh, greedy about the achievements. And as uh, Mr. Walid said, uh, they promise less and achieve more. This was the last thing on uh, today's breakfast show. Stay with Night TV International coming to you live from Cairo. I'm Nasreen Bahar.